Have you ever thought about whether being too kind could actually make things tough for you? Or what Buddhism has to say about being kind in a smart way? And have you wondered if being nice all the time could change how you grow as a person or affect your friendships and family ties? These questions might surprise you. We often hear that being kind is good, something that makes everyone and everything better. But what if I told you there's more to the story? Today, we're going on a special journey together. We'll dig into how being overly kind without thinking it through might actually backfire. Sometimes when we try too hard to be nice, we might end up feeling taken for granted, or we might even forget to look after ourselves. That's where the wise teachings of Buddhism come in. Buddhism teaches us how to be kind in a wise way, making sure we're not hurting ourselves while trying to help others. In our chat today, we'll uncover how sometimes, when we don't get the kindness we give back from others, it can sting. We'll talk about why it's super important to also be kind to ourselves, not just to everyone else. We'll look into how some folks might see kindness as a sign that they can push us around and what that means for us and our dreams. But this isn't just about the tough stuff. We're also going to explore how to strike the perfect balance. How can we make sure our kindness is a strength, not something that holds us back? How do we keep our hearts open and kind in a way that's good for us and everyone around us? We've got 10 interesting points to share with you, each shining a light on a different angle of being kind. We promise it's going to make you think and maybe even see kindness in a whole new light. So, why should you stick around till the end? Because we're not just going to talk about the tricky bits. We're here to share some real wisdom on how to be kind in a way that feels good and right, drawing on some cool ideas from Buddhism. And trust me, these are insights you won't want to miss. Before we dive in, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications for our Wisdom in Real Life YouTube channel. This isn't just any talk. It's your next step toward being wisely kind with plenty of laughs and learning along the way. Ready to find out how to make kindness your superpower? Let's get started. 1. The Danger of Excessive Kindness Imagine walking down a path where every step you take is out of kindness. Sounds pretty nice, right? But what happens when you keep walking, offering every piece of your heart and time without ever stopping to think if you might be giving too much? This is where we start to see the danger of excessive kindness, a path that might seem full of light but can lead us into shadows if we're not careful. Think of kindness like water. In the right amount, it nourishes and brings life, but too much water can flood and wash away, leaving behind more harm than good. Being overly kind without balance can make us feel lost, forgetting our own needs and goals. It's like putting everyone else's oxygen masks on first in an airplane, forgetting that we need to breathe too. Buddhism teaches us about the middle way, a path of balance avoiding extremes. This wisdom reminds us that true kindness also includes being kind to ourselves. It's about finding that sweet spot where our kindness enriches both our lives and those around us without draining our own well. When we're excessively kind, we might end up feeling used or not appreciated. It's as if our kindness becomes invisible, taken for granted. It's crucial to remember that it's okay to say no or to ask for time for ourselves. This doesn't make us less kind. It makes our kindness more meaningful because it comes from a place of strength and self-respect. There's a fear sometimes that if we stop being endlessly giving, people will think we're not nice or that we're weak. But here's a twist. Setting boundaries and caring for ourselves actually shows immense strength. It tells the world we value ourselves and our well-being. And this, in turn, teaches others how to treat us with the same respect. Excessive kindness can also blur our personal goals. Have you ever been so busy helping others with their dreams that you forget to chase your own? It's like being a supporting actor in your own life's movie. Remember, your dreams are valid and deserve as much attention and care as the kindness you extend to others. 
And yet, in protecting ourselves, we're not closing off our hearts. We're simply guiding our kindness with wisdom, ensuring it's received well and truly helpful. It's about giving from a full cup, where our kindness flows from abundance, not obligation or expectation. The beauty of mindful kindness is in recognizing that every act of genuine care, no matter how small, is powerful. A smile, a kind word, or a moment to listen can be transformative, both for the giver and the receiver. This is the heart of true kindness. It doesn't ask for anything in return. It simply exists to make the world a bit brighter. In our journey of kindness, let's not forget the community around us. Sharing our experiences, challenges, and successes in being kindly balanced can inspire and uplift others. It's about creating a ripple effect of kindness rooted in mindfulness and self-care. As we reflect on the danger of excessive kindness, let's remember the wisdom of the middle way. Let our kindness be like a gentle river, nourishing life without overwhelming it. Let it be a reflection of our inner peace and balance, a testament to the strength and beauty of a heart that knows the value of both giving and receiving. In embracing this balanced approach, we find not just the joy of helping others, but also the deeper fulfillment of growing and thriving in our own lives. This is the art of kindness, a path that leads us to discover the richness of a life lived with compassion, wisdom, and a deep, unwavering love for ourselves and the world around us. 2. Unreciprocated Expectations Let's talk about a journey many of us embark on without even realizing it. The journey of giving kindness and sometimes not seeing it returned the way we hoped. It's like planting a garden, caring for it day after day and waiting for the flowers to bloom, only to find that some seeds never sprout. This experience, while common, can leave us feeling a bit empty and puzzled. Why do our acts of kindness not always get the warm response we expect? In the heart of this exploration is a simple yet profound truth from Buddhism, the beauty of giving without waiting for something in return. Imagine giving someone a gift just because, without hoping, they'll give you something back. This idea might seem tough to wrap our head around at first because it's natural to hope for a smile, a thank you, or a kind gesture in return. But there's something incredibly freeing about letting go of these expectations and just being kind for the sake of it. When we give kindness and it seems to vanish into thin air, not acknowledged by the person we gave it to, it's a test of our inner strength. It invites us to ask ourselves, why am I being kind? If the answer is to get something back, we might end up feeling let down. But if we're being kind because it's simply part of who we are, there's a certain peace and happiness that comes with it, knowing we've spread a little light in the world, seen or unseen. Building relationships on this foundation of unconditional kindness creates a different kind of connection. It's not about keeping score of who did what for whom, but about sharing moments of genuine care and support. This doesn't mean we let people take advantage of our kindness. It means our kindness comes from a place so deep inside us that it doesn't need recognition to feel worthwhile. There's a special kind of joy in this approach to kindness, a contentment that doesn't depend on how others react. It's about feeling good because we've acted according to our values, not because we've been rewarded for our behavior. This is where we find real emotional strength in knowing that our value doesn't decrease based on someone's inability to see our worth or the worth of our kind actions. Keeping our sense of self-worth intact is crucial, especially when our kindness seems to go unnoticed. It's a reminder to pat ourselves on the back, to recognize our own goodness, and to know that every act of kindness is a reflection of our heart, not a reflection of how people respond. We can find inspiration in stories from others who have walked this path, sharing kindness without expecting anything in return and finding a deep sense of fulfillment in it. These stories aren't just tales. They're real-life lessons on the power of giving freely and the personal growth that comes with it. 
Gratitude plays a key role here too. Being thankful for our ability to be kind, for the moments we get to help others, transforms our experience of giving. It turns each act of kindness into a gift, not just for the receiver but for ourselves too, enriching our lives with every gesture. Reaching out to our community for support helps us see we're not alone. Hearing others' experiences and sharing our own can lift us up, reminding us that our efforts to spread kindness are valuable, even when they're not visibly acknowledged. Practices like mindful reflection help us dive deeper into the reasons behind our kindness, healing any hurt from unmet expectations, and rekindling our commitment to live with an open heart. This reflection brings us back to the present moment, to the act of giving itself, and to the joy that comes from simply being kind. This journey teaches us that true kindness doesn't look for applause or a return gift. It's about giving from the heart, without strings attached, creating a ripple of goodwill that, in its own time and way, touches lives in unseen depths. As we embrace this approach to kindness, we not only nurture our own inner peace, but also contribute to a kinder, more compassionate world, one act of kindness at a time. And if this is making sense to you, don't forget to like and subscribe to our Wisdom in Real Life channel. 3. Loss of Self-Care Taking care of others with kindness is like sharing a piece of our heart, showing love and warmth to those around us. But have you ever stopped to think about how important it is to show that same kindness to ourselves? Sometimes, in all our efforts to be there for everyone else, we might forget to look after our own needs. Let's take a moment to talk about why it's so crucial to keep some of that kindness for ourselves too. Imagine you're a cup of water. Every time you do something nice for someone, it's like pouring a bit of your water into their cup. It's a beautiful thing to share, but if you keep pouring out all your water without refilling, you'll end up empty. That's why self-care is so important. It's the way we refill our cup, making sure we have plenty of kindness for ourselves and to share with others. Self-care means listening to what we need and taking steps to meet those needs. It's not just about treating ourselves now and then, but making sure we're feeling good every day. This could mean getting enough rest, enjoying a hobby, spending time with friends, or just sitting quietly for a few minutes. These little acts of kindness towards ourselves can make a big difference in how we feel. But here's the tricky part. Sometimes we might feel guilty or selfish for taking time for ourselves, especially when we're used to always putting others first. It's important to remember that taking care of ourselves isn't selfish, it's necessary. Just like in an airplane, we're told to put on our oxygen mask first before helping others. If we're not okay, it's much harder to help anyone else. Setting boundaries is a big part of self-care. This means knowing when to say no or when to take a break so we don't wear ourselves out. It's not about pushing people away, but making sure we're looking after our well-being so we can be our best for those we care about. Sometimes we might forget what self-care looks like for us, or we might feel too busy, but it's never too late to start. It could be something as simple as taking a short walk, reading a book, or anything that makes us feel happy and relaxed. It's all about finding little ways to make ourselves smile and feel good inside. When we take care of ourselves, our kindness becomes even more powerful because it comes from a place of love and strength. We're able to give more freely and happily, knowing that we're also looking after our own hearts. Talking about self-care and sharing stories can inspire others to take better care of themselves, too. It's like spreading a message that it's okay to put yourself first sometimes. And when we support each other in self-care, we build a community where everyone feels valued and loved, not just for what they give, but for who they are. Mindfulness and meditation can be great tools for self-care. They help us pause and check in with ourselves, asking, how am I really doing? These quiet moments can be a sanctuary, a safe place to rest and recharge our spirits. By making self-care a regular part of our lives, we're not just helping ourselves. We're showing the world that kindness starts with how we treat ourselves. It's a beautiful cycle of giving and receiving, where everyone benefits. In the end, 
Self-care is all about balance. It's finding that sweet spot where we can care for others and ourselves in equal measure. As we walk this path, we learn that self-kindness is not just a gift to ourselves, but a foundation for all the kindness we share with the world. Let's remember to refill our cups, not just for our sake, but so we can continue to pour into the lives of those around us with joy and love. 4. Perception of Weakness Kindness is often seen as a light shining brightly in a sometimes dark world. But have you ever noticed how some people might see this light as a sign of weakness? It's an odd thought, isn't it? That being nice and caring could be viewed as anything but strong. Yet, this perception exists, and it's worth diving into why, and more importantly, how we can change it. Imagine you're walking through a garden, admiring the flowers. You choose to water a wilting flower because you understand its need for care. Some might see this act of care as unnecessary, thinking the flower should fend for itself. But you know better. You know that a little water can go a long way. This is a lot like kindness. It's not a weakness. It's understanding and acting on the needs around us, which actually requires a lot of strength. The idea that kindness is a weakness is a misunderstanding, a mix-up in reading the situation. It's like mistaking the quiet of the early morning as a lack of life, when really, it's full of potential and the promise of a new day. Kindness, in its true form, is powerful. It has the potential to change days, to change lives, even to change the world. Buddhism teaches us about the strength found in gentleness and compassion. It's a reminder that true power doesn't have to be loud or forceful, like water carving through rock over time, kindness has a persistent strength that can overcome the hardest barriers. Yet facing the world with kindness can sometimes leave us feeling vulnerable, especially when our acts of care aren't received as we hoped. It's in these moments that we must remember why we chose to be kind in the first place. Not for recognition or to prove a point, but because it's a reflection of who we are. Empowering ourselves through kindness is about flipping the script, showing that our choice to be kind is not a sign of our inability to be tough. It's a conscious decision to foster a world we'd all like to live in. It's standing up and saying, I choose kindness, despite the pushback or misunderstandings. The impact of kindness goes far beyond the moment. It plants seeds of change that can grow into something beautiful, transforming our environment and the people within it. Just as a single candle can light a dark room, a single act of kindness can illuminate the darkest of situations. Redefining strength through the lens of kindness is an important step. It involves highlighting stories where kindness has led to positive changes, big and small. It's about showing that the courage to be kind, especially in the face of adversity, is a form of bravery. In professional settings, kindness can be a superpower. It fosters teamwork, encourages open communication, and builds an atmosphere where people feel valued and heard. This, in turn, leads to greater productivity and innovation because when people feel good, they do good work. Educating others on the value of kindness is crucial. It's about having conversations, sharing experiences, and challenging the stereotype that to be kind is to be weak. It's about leading by example, showing that kindness is a choice of strength. Creating a culture that celebrates kindness is perhaps the most significant step. It involves each of us contributing to an environment where kindness is recognized as a strength, where acts of care and compassion are not just appreciated, but seen as essential. Kindness is not a weakness. It's a profound strength that requires courage, resilience, and a big heart. It's about making the world a little brighter, a little warmer, one act at a time. As we move forward, let's carry this understanding with us, shining our light of kindness, not just as a beacon of hope, but as a testament to our strength. And if this is making sense to you, don't forget to like and subscribe to our Wisdom in Real Life channel. 5. Relationship Dynamics 
Understanding how kindness affects our relationships is a bit like learning how to nurture a garden. It's all about giving each plant exactly what it needs, not too much water or too little sunlight, but just the right amount to help it grow and thrive. This careful balance makes our garden a place of beauty and harmony. Let's look at how this idea plays out in our connections with others, making sure our acts of kindness help our relationships bloom in the best way possible. First off, think of kindness as the sunshine in our garden of relationships. Just as plants need light to grow, our relationships need kindness to flourish. But it's all about finding the right balance. Showering someone with too much attention or not giving enough can lead to problems. It's like overwatering a plant. Too much kindness can sometimes overwhelm people or make them feel like they can't give anything back. Communication is key in any relationship, and kindness helps us talk and listen in a way that makes everyone feel valued. Imagine having a chat where each word you say is gently passed to the other person, even during disagreements. This doesn't mean avoiding tough topics, but addressing them with care and respect, which can bring people closer and make the bond stronger. However, sometimes people might see kindness as a sign that they can take advantage of someone. It's like a garden where one plant takes all the water, leaving the others dry. Here, being kind also means being kind to ourselves by setting clear boundaries that protect our well-being and ensure the relationship is fair and balanced. In giving kindness, it's beautiful not to expect anything in return, like planting a seed and enjoying the act of planting itself, regardless of what grows. When we let go of these expectations, our relationships can unfold more naturally, allowing the true joy of connecting and sharing moments to shine through. During tough times, kindness is the gentle rain that soothes and heals, helping us find a way through conflicts with understanding and care. It's about coming together to face challenges, showing that support and compassion can turn even the hardest times into opportunities for growth and deeper connection. Every relationship is unique, like each plant in our garden. This means being thoughtful about how we show kindness, tailoring our actions to suit each person's needs and the nature of our connection with them. It's a journey of discovery that enriches our relationships in wonderful ways. Trust is the soil that nourishes our relationships, and kindness is what builds this trust day by day. Small acts of kindness lay the foundation for strong, lasting bonds that can weather any storm, showing that our care for each other is deep and genuine. But kindness isn't just about big gestures. It's often the little things that matter most. A smile, a kind word, or a moment of attention can weave magic into our daily interactions, creating a rich tapestry of connection that makes life more vibrant and fulfilling. Sharing our experiences of kindness, both giving and receiving, can inspire others to do the same. It's a way of spreading the seeds of kindness far and wide, encouraging a culture where caring and support are at the heart of every relationship. As we navigate the journey of our relationships, let's let kindness guide us, making it the light that illuminates our path and the warmth that nurtures our connections. In doing so, we create a world where every relationship is a garden of kindness, blooming with the colors of care, understanding, and mutual respect. Exploring the role of kindness in relationships shows us that it's much more than just being nice. It's a powerful force that shapes how we connect, understand, and support one another. Let's cherish and cultivate this kindness, making it the cornerstone of all our relationships. 6. Compromised Goals and Personal Growth Being kind to others is a bit like sharing pieces of a puzzle with everyone around us, helping them complete their picture. But have you ever thought about what happens if we keep giving away all our pieces without keeping some for our own puzzle? Our picture, our dreams and goals might start looking incomplete. Let's chat about how we can give kindness to others without forgetting to save some for ourselves and our ambitions. Imagine you have a garden where you spend all your time planting and watering flowers for everyone else, and you never plant your own. Eventually, you'll notice that while everyone else's garden is blooming, 
yours hasn't even started. This is what can happen when we focus all our energy on being there for others and put our own goals and dreams on the back burner. Our dreams need attention and care, just like plants need sunlight and water to grow. If we're always busy watering everyone else's garden, we might not have enough left for our own. It's not about not wanting to help others. It's just remembering that our dreams are important too. Learning to be kind to ourselves is key. It's okay to take time to focus on what we want and need. Think of it as filling up your own cup so you can share more with others later. When we take care of our own goals, we're not being selfish. We're making sure we're strong, happy, and ready to be there for others in even better ways. Creating boundaries is part of this balance. It means knowing when to say, I need to focus on my own stuff right now. This isn't about pushing people away, but making sure we have the space to grow our own dreams too. When we chase our own goals, we're not saying we don't care about others. It's about understanding that by growing ourselves, we can offer even more to those around us. It's like learning new skills so we can help others in more ways. Sometimes we might worry that if we spend time on our own goals, we'll miss chances to be kind and help others. But remember, growing ourselves doesn't stop us from being kind. In fact, it often means we have more to give because we're happier and more fulfilled. Sharing our journey of balancing personal growth with kindness can inspire others to nurture their own dreams too. When they see us taking steps towards our goals while still being kind, they might feel encouraged to do the same. Being mindful about our needs and the needs of others helps us find the right balance. It's about making choices that are good for us and those around us, ensuring we don't lose sight of our personal goals in the process. Embracing kindness towards ourselves as a part of growing means we see taking steps toward our dreams as a way of being kind to ourselves. Each step forward is not just about achieving something, but also about being the best version of ourselves, for us and for those around us. Remember, being kind and pursuing our own goals are not two separate paths. They're part of the same journey. As we learn and grow, we become more capable of sharing kindness in meaningful, impactful ways. So, in the puzzle of life, it's important to keep some pieces for our own picture. By doing so, we not only complete our own beautiful scene, but also have more pieces to share with others. It's all about finding that balance, where we can help others build their pictures while not forgetting about our own. In exploring how kindness towards others can sometimes mean we forget about our own dreams, we see that it's possible to do both. We can be there for others and still chase our own goals. It's like walking on a path where every step we take not only moves us forward, but also spreads a little sunshine on those walking with us. Let's keep sharing kindness while also making sure our own dreams are nurtured and given the chance to soar. And if this is making sense to you, don't forget to like and subscribe to our Wisdom in Real Life channel. 7. Buddhism as a Guiding Principle Buddhism offers us a gentle way to look at life and our place in it, kind of like a map that helps us navigate through both sunny and stormy weather. It's not just about following a set of rules, it's more about finding ways to live peacefully and kindly, both with ourselves and others. Let's dive into how Buddhism can guide us in our everyday lives, making our journey a bit smoother and more joyful. Imagine you're in the middle of a really busy place, like a bustling market or a crowded street, but inside you feel calm and clear, like you're in a quiet corner of a garden. Buddhism teaches us how to find this peaceful spot within ourselves, even when everything around us is in fast motion. This inner calm helps us see things more clearly and make better decisions. Being mindful or paying attention to what's happening right now is a big part of Buddhism. It's like going for a walk and really noticing everything. The colors of the leaves, the feel of the breeze, the sounds of the birds. This practice helps us appreciate the small moments, reduces our stress, and makes us happier. Kindness is super important in Buddhism. It asks us to understand that everyone around us wants to be happy and avoid pain, just like we do. When we look at others with kindness, 
even difficult situations can become a little easier to handle, and we start to spread a bit of happiness wherever we go. Buddhism talks about how we're all connected to other people, to animals, to the planet. It's like looking at a web covered in dew in the morning. Each drop reflects all the others. This idea helps us think about how our actions affect the world and encourages us to live in a way that's good for everything and everyone. Everything changes, and Buddhism helps us get comfortable with this. Sometimes we have good days, sometimes bad, but knowing that these days will pass helps us not get too stuck on any one thing. It's a bit like watching the weather change, knowing that no matter if it's sunny or rainy, it won't last forever. Instead of looking outside for happiness, Buddhism teaches us to look inside. It's like discovering a treasure in your own backyard. This search inside can help us find peace and happiness that doesn't depend on buying new things or getting likes on social media. Meditation is a big help, according to Buddhism. It's like giving our minds a break, a chance to rest, and clear out all the buzz. Regular meditation can help us feel more peaceful and give us insights into who we are and how we fit into the big picture. Being generous doesn't just mean giving away stuff or money. It also means sharing our time, attention, and care with others. Buddhism tells us that this kind of giving is actually good for us. Lighting up our own lives as much as it lights up the lives of those we're helping. Kind of like a lamp that brightens a room for everyone. Buddhism teaches us to be patient, both with how things are going in our lives and with other people. It's like planting a garden and knowing that you can't rush the flowers to bloom. Patience helps us approach life more gently, without getting upset when things don't happen right away. Lastly, Buddhism is all about growing and learning throughout our lives, always being open to new lessons and experiences. It's like being on a long, winding road that takes us through all sorts of landscapes, each turn offering a chance to learn something new and become a bit wiser and kinder. By letting Buddhism guide us, we can tackle life's challenges with a calm heart and a clear head. It's not about changing everything overnight, but gently incorporating these ideas into our lives, finding our own peaceful path through the hustle and bustle of the world. Let's carry these teachings with us as quiet reminders to live each moment with awareness, kindness, and a deep sense of joy in the simple things. 8. Strategies for Protection Protecting ourselves in life's journey is a lot like being the captain of a ship navigating through both calm and stormy seas. It's important to have strategies in place that help us maintain our well-being while we interact with the world in a kind and open way. Let's sail into how we can keep ourselves safe and sound. Understanding what it means to protect ourselves is the first step. Imagine it's not about building a tall, thick wall around us, but more like knowing when to open or close our windows to keep the bad weather out while still letting in the fresh air. It's recognizing when a situation or someone is asking too much from us, more than we can or should give, and knowing it's okay to seek shelter. Being mindful or really paying attention to what's happening around us and inside us is like having a radar on our ship. This radar helps us see potential problems from far away, giving us a chance to steer clear before we're in too deep. It helps us recognize when we're getting too tired or when someone is not treating us right, letting us take action early. Setting healthy boundaries is crucial. It's like drawing a safety line on our ship's deck beyond which no one is allowed without permission. This keeps us from stretching ourselves too thin or letting others take over our space. It's about saying, this is where I draw the line in a way that keeps us feeling safe and respected. Building emotional resilience is like strengthening our ship, making it sturdy enough to withstand big waves and strong winds. This involves taking care of ourselves, connecting with friends who support us, and finding healthy ways to deal with stress. It means we can face tough times without breaking, knowing we have the tools and support to get through. Learning to say no is a powerful tool. It's like choosing which seas we're willing to sail and which ones we'd rather avoid. Saying no means recognizing that we're in charge of our journey 
and deciding how we spend our time and energy. It can be tough at first, but it's freeing, like setting our own course. Having supportive friends and family around us is like sailing with a fleet. We're not alone. We have people who look out for us, respect our boundaries, and lend a hand when the seas get rough. These relationships are our safety net, making the journey more enjoyable and much safer. Self-care is our shield. It includes anything that keeps us healthy and happy, eating well, staying active, and doing things we enjoy. It's like stocking our ship with all the supplies we need for a long voyage, ensuring we have the energy and strength to face whatever comes our way. Staying informed and prepared is key. Knowing about potential risks and how to handle them makes us stronger and more confident. It's like having a map and compass. Even when we're exploring unknown territories, we have tools to help us find our way safely. Finding inner peace is our anchor. It keeps us steady, no matter how choppy the waters get. Practices like meditation and yoga help us find calm within the storm, reminding us that deep down, we have a place of quiet strength to hold on to. Being flexible and adaptable means we can change our plans as needed, just like adjusting our sails to catch the wind. Life can be unpredictable, but being able to shift our strategies for protection helps us stay on course, no matter how the wind blows. By weaving these strategies into the fabric of our daily lives, we're setting ourselves up to sail through life's challenges with confidence and peace of mind. It's all about knowing how to take care of ourselves, keeping our ship safe as we explore the vast, beautiful ocean of life. Remember, taking steps to protect ourselves is not just smart, it's a way of showing love and respect for ourselves, ensuring that we can continue our journey with joy and resilience, ready for whatever adventures lie ahead. And if this is making sense to you, don't forget to like and subscribe to our Wisdom in Real Life channel. 9. The Global Impact of Kindness Kindness is like a gentle but powerful force that can travel across the world, making a huge difference in ways we might not even realize. Imagine kindness as a small stone thrown into a pond. The ripples it creates spread out far and wide, reaching places and people we might never see. Let's take a closer look at how our simple acts of kindness can ripple across the globe, making it a better place for everyone. When we're kind, it's like speaking a language that everyone understands, no matter where they're from. A smile or a helpful hand doesn't need translation. This universal language of kindness can bring people closer together, making us feel connected, even if we're miles apart. It shows us that deep down, we all want the same things, to be happy, to feel safe, and to be loved. Kindness has a big role in creating peace all over the world. Small moments of understanding and helping each other can lead to bigger steps towards peace in communities and even between countries. It's like planting tiny seeds of peace everywhere we go. With enough care and patience, these seeds can grow into strong trees that provide shade and comfort to many people. When we choose to be kind, we often think about sharing what we have with others. This could be our time, things we own, or something as simple as a kind word. This sharing helps tackle big problems like poverty and makes sure everyone has what they need. It's like making sure everyone at the table has enough to eat before starting our meal. Being kind to our planet is another important part of kindness. It means doing things that help the earth, like recycling or using less water. These actions might seem small, but when lots of people do them, it can lead to a healthier planet for us and future generations. It's like cleaning up a park so everyone can enjoy it. In the business world, kindness can change how companies work. Imagine businesses that not only want to make money, but also take care of their workers and the environment. This kind of kindness can encourage other companies to do the same, leading to a world where businesses help make things better for everyone. Kindness also sparks creativity and new ideas. When we look at problems with a kind heart, we're more open to finding solutions that are good for everyone. 
It's like using a different set of colors to paint, discovering pictures we never thought we could create. Worldwide, being kind can make everyone healthier and happier. When people feel supported and cared for, they're less stressed and can live fuller lives. This means communities are stronger and can take care of each other better, like a big family looking out for everyone's well-being. Volunteering and giving to others are powerful ways to spread kindness. When we help out or donate to causes we care about, it's like joining a big team where everyone is working together to make the world a nicer place. Every bit of help adds up, making a big difference in the end. Fighting against unfairness and making sure everyone is treated well is another way kindness can change the world. It's about making sure everyone has a chance to shine, no matter who they are or where they come from. It's like making a giant quilt where every piece is valued for its unique beauty. Lastly, the kindness we show today teaches the next generation how to be compassionate and caring. Kids watch what we do and learn from us. By being kind, we're showing them how to create a world that's more loving and kind. It's like passing on a precious family recipe that makes the world a sweeter place. In summary, even the smallest act of kindness can have a big impact all around the world. Each kind thing we do is like adding a light to a map, making the world brighter and warmer for everyone. So, let's keep spreading kindness, knowing that it travels far beyond what we can see, making a difference in ways we might only imagine. 10. The Science and Art of Kindness Kindness is like a special secret that makes both the person being kind and the person receiving kindness feel really good. Scientists have discovered that when we do nice things for others, our bodies create happy chemicals that make us feel great. It's as if we're built to be kind. Studying how kindness affects our brains and bodies shows us that being kind can help us feel less stressed, happier, and even live longer. It's amazing how doing something nice for someone else can do so much good for us, too. The way we show kindness can be as unique and creative as painting a picture or writing a song. It could be making a card for someone, saying kind words when they need it, or giving a hug. These special touches make kindness not just an action, but an art, showing our care and thoughtfulness. All around the world, in every country and culture, people share stories, music, and art that talk about being kind. These stories connect us no matter where we're from and remind us that caring for others is something that everyone understands and values. When we're kind, it starts a chain reaction, kind of like when you see someone smile and you can't help but smile too. One kind act leads to another, and before you know it, Lots of people are feeling happier and more connected. Being kind also helps us grow as people. It teaches us to think about others, not just ourselves, and find ways to make their day a little brighter. This helps us feel like we're part of something bigger and find new ways to be happy and fulfilled. There are many people who spend their lives helping others, like volunteers or those who work in jobs where they care for people. These kindness superheroes show us how powerful and important it is to look out for one another. Teaching kids about kindness is super important. It helps them learn to care for others and understand how their actions can make a big difference. When kids grow up knowing how to be kind, they help create a world that's nicer for everyone. Nowadays, we can use computers and phones to spread kindness too. Whether it's sending a nice message online or using an app that reminds us to do kind things, technology lets us share kindness with more people than ever before. Lastly, every time we share stories about being kind, whether they're in books, movies, or even just tales we tell our friends, we inspire more kindness. It's like passing on a torch that lights up the world, showing everyone how awesome it is to care for each other. So, kindness is not just about being nice. It's a powerful mix of science and creativity that makes our world a better place. Every kind act, no matter how small, adds up to something big, helping everyone feel a bit happier and more connected. Let's keep the kindness going, 
knowing that with each smile, helping hand, or kind word, we're making the world a little brighter for everyone. Conclusion As we come to the end of our journey talking about kindness, we've learned a lot about how powerful and important it is. Kindness is really special because it not only makes others happy, but it makes us feel good too. It's like a magic spell that spreads happiness everywhere it goes. When we're kind to others, it's like we're all holding hands, making the world a happier place together. We discovered that taking care of ourselves and being kind to ourselves is just as important as being kind to other people. It's kind of like when you're on an airplane and they tell you to put on your oxygen mask first before helping others. If we're feeling good and happy, we can share more happiness with those around us. Kindness can be big, like helping someone in a huge way, but it can also be in the little things, like smiling at someone or saying thank you. Every time we do something kind, no matter how small it might seem, it adds a little bit of joy to the world. It's amazing to think about how a small act of kindness from us can make a big difference in someone's day. And the cool thing is, when we do kind things, it encourages others to do the same. It's like when you see someone helping another person, it makes you want to help someone too. This way, kindness keeps moving like a wave, reaching more and more people. Let's all be superheroes of kindness, using our power to make the world a better place, one kind act at a time. Remember, no act of kindness is too small. Each one is a step towards making the world a friendlier, happier place for everyone. And if this is making sense to you, don't forget to like and subscribe to our Wisdom in Real Life channel.